iPad 10th generation, iPad Air 5. They're basically the same device, aren't they? No. You know that thing that you're not supposed to say about Apple these days? The whole, well, if Steve was around, this wouldn't happen. You see, Apple keeps giving me reason to lean on that rhetoric. For instance, the decision to saddle this 10th generation iPad with the first generation Apple Pencil is ludicrous, as is the ballooning iPad lineup that is getting more and more confusing. And if you've seen my video about the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you'll know that I'm not particularly impressed with this either. And having read the comments about my 10th generation iPad review, I can see that a lot of people are confused about how to pick between the iPad Air 5 and this 10th generation iPad. Let me try and help. Just a quick word from today's sponsor, which is the fantastic Paperlike. I put a Paperlike screen protector onto any iPad I use the Apple Pencil with, including the iPad Air 5. It's basically a screen protector that makes your iPad screen feel like paper. If you wanna use your iPad for anything to do with note taking, drawing, sketching, that sort of stuff, I think a Paperlike is an absolutely essential purchase. And the best news is that they've just released version 2.1, which is even better. It's got an even better, more paper paper-like feel, but more importantly, the screen Basically, it doesn't look like you've got a screen protector on there. And that's often the case. If you put a screen protector onto an iPad, it can dull the colors a little bit. This version 2.1 of Paperlike is, it's just like it's not there. So a huge thank you to Paperlike for supporting this channel as always, and thank you for making my writing experience on these tablets so much better. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Let's start this comparison with the colours and the pricing. Why colours? Well, they matter to some people. And straight away, the 10th generation iPad was launched with these brand new colours. I got really excited about them. I ordered the yellow, it came, and it's not really yellow at all. It's this weird kind of mustardy kind of metallic thing, which I don't really like. I'd perhaps go and check them out in the store if you can. The iPad Air comes with, it's five colours. I've made a note here. They're all a bit muted, a bit boring, a bit utilitarian. I've gone for the blue one, which looks quite nice actually. It's very smart if you like, but it's not very fun. The 10th generation iPad starts at £499 in the UK. That's the Wi-Fi version, so no cellular, and it gets you 128 gigabytes of storage. If you want the cellular version, that is £679. It's quite expensive. The iPad Air, I need to not get these iPads mixed up. The iPad Air, thankfully they're different colors. This starts at 669 in the UK. And if you want the cellular version, it's 849. Now the most you'll spend on both of these devices if you completely spec them up is 859 for the 10th generation and 1029 for the iPad Air 5. They both max out at 256 gigabytes. And basically the difference in price between these two iPads is always 170 pounds. That's not really a seismic difference, which does beg the question, how are these two iPads pitched? Whenever I need to work out who a certain Apple product is for, it's not always that obvious, I go to the product's webpage on the Apple website and look at what appears above the fold. For the 10th generation iPad, we're hit immediately with those colorful options. And straight away, we see the coupling of the iPad and the Magic Keyboard Folio. This is accompanied by the words lovable, drawable, which I'm not convinced is a word, and magical. Then if we look at the page for the iPad Air, you don't see much of the device itself. Instead, we get a thin slither of the device and the words light, bright, full of might. Now, if you scroll down these web pages, they get vastly different in the way they pitch these two iPads. The 10th generation is all about taking it with you, jotting down notes and doing cool creative stuff. Whereas the iPad Air hits you straight away, straight between the eyes with speed, power and immense capabilities. And that's all thanks to the inclusion of the M1 chip. We promised extraordinary graphics performance and neural engine powered abilities to do amazing things. And if you believe everything you read and see on that page, Age, you'd be forgiven for thinking that you can do anything with that iPad Air compared to the more homework focused 10th generation iPad. There's just one problem with this, which is that the M1 chip is meaningless to 99% of users. Both of these iPads in normal everyday use where you're doing normal iPad stuff, you know, creating content, consuming content, doing normal homework stuff, email, web surfing, YouTube watching, they feel completely identical, which they inevitably will because iPads are just fast by default. And again, that begs the question, where else are they different?
Let's start with biometrics. So neither of these iPads have Face ID. Instead, we get Touch ID on the power button at the top. It's fine, it works. It's always felt a little bit unnaturally placed for me though. Moving on to the display, and this is normally an area where you can tell when you spent more money. It might be bigger, brighter, have a higher refresh rate. So do you get anything else for your 170 quid if you buy the iPad Air 5 over the 10th generation iPad? Not really. You see, both of these iPads have the same 10.9 inch liquid retina display. It's the same pixel density, which is 264 PPI, the same brightness, 500 nits, and the exact same resolution, which is 2360 by 1640. They've both got True Tone, which is a fantastic feature. They don't have ProMotion, so they're 60 hertz panels. There's only three differences between these two displays. The first one is that the display on the iPad Air 5 is fully laminated, and that means there's very little gap between the display technology and the glass. Whereas on the 10th generation iPad, you can see a bit of a gap. The iPad Air 5 has also got P3 color, which basically means more vivid, vibrant colors and better color reproduction. And finally, it has an anti-reflective coating, which this one doesn't have. So the winner when it comes to displays is the iPad Air 5, just because of those three things. Are those three things worth 170 quid though? Not really. Let's talk very quickly about the chips that are in these two iPads. So the 10th generation iPad has the A14 Bionic. It has six CPU cores and four GPU cores, and it's very fast. The iPad Air has the M1 chip. That has an eight core CPU and eight core GPU. Again, it's very fast. But as I mentioned earlier, they both perform identically in normal real world usage. So when it comes to performance and chips, it's a tie, I'm afraid. We're not getting anywhere, are we? Hang on, there must be something else. There must be something else. Ah, cameras, cameras, cameras. They've both got cameras, uh, obviously. And yeah, on the back, they're the same and you'll probably never use them anyway. On the front, Apple refers to the 10th generation's FaceTime camera as a landscape ultra wide camera. Whereas the iPad Air has a 12 megapixel ultra wide front camera. So really there's not much of a difference there. I'm just shooting some B-roll of these two iPads and I've just realized something I did forget about the camera system. On the 10th generation iPad, the front facing camera is here. It's horizontal. So if you've got your iPad in like laptop mode sitting there, the camera is in the right place. On the iPad Air 5, it's not. It's in the same iPad place of being up here, which is just silly. So that is one thing that the 10th generation iPad has over the iPad Air 5 when it comes to the camera system. It's still not enough. Okay, I found a very interesting difference, which is to do with accessories. And we'll start with the Magic Keyboard. So the iPad Air 5 is compatible with the original Magic Keyboard. And if you've not seen this before, it's the one that really was intended first for the iPad Pro. It opens up like a laptop, like this, and it's very, very nice. There are some issues with it because that's pretty much all it does. You can't fold it around the back, you can't detach the keyboard, and there's no function row key or keys. Now the 10th generation iPad is compatible with the brand new Magic Keyboard Folio, which is this. Looks very similar on the face of it to the Magic Keyboard, but it's incredibly different. So the first thing is that it has this kickstand built into it, which is a, that's not the way you do it, sorry. It has a kickstand here built into it, which flicks open like that, a bit like a Microsoft Surface. Contrary to popular belief, you can use this on your lap. I've tested it, it works, you can angle it nicely, it doesn't fall off, it's fine. But there's a few things about this Magic Keyboard Folio that do make it better, I think, than the Magic Keyboard. Firstly, you can actually detach the keyboard, so if I open it up like this, I can just pull the keyboard off, and I'm left with a iPad with a folio still on it with that kickstand. So I can flick that open, put it on the desk and watch YouTube. Secondly, it's got a row of function keys. So we've got escape, brightness, media controls. This is what we wanted all along. The trackpad is slightly bigger as well. I do find the trackpad on the 11 inch Magic Keyboard a bit too restrictive. This is pretty much the right size. Also, if I put it back on here, you can swing it round like that, or as someone pointed out in my comments recently, you can actually reverse it. So put it around that way, 
swing it round to hide the keyboard, protect the keyboard, and you've got a carryable iPad, which you can't do with the Magic Keyboard, because once you open the Magic Keyboard, it's in this kind of forever laptop position. Next up, we have Apple Pencil support, and I did go into quite a big rant about this on my original review of the 10th generation iPad. I'll link to that above, so I won't go into too much more of a rant today, but I am going to moan about it a bit, because it's ridiculous. So basically, if you weren't aware, the iPad Air, the iPad Air 5, is compatible, quite rightly, with the second generation Apple Pencil. This is the best version of the Apple Pencil. It's the right size, it feels very nice, it's made out of a nice material, it's got a ridge on it as well, so it doesn't roll off every single surface, and more importantly, to charge it, you just do that. Now, the 10th generation iPad isn't compatible with that Apple Pencil. If you want to use a Apple Pencil with this, you have to get the first generation Apple Pencil. There are two issues here. The first one is that the way that you charge the original Apple Pencil is by taking this little cap off, which you'll lose straight away, and plugging the what remains of the Apple Pencil into the lightning port of your iPad. But the problem is that there is no lightning port on this new 10th generation iPad. Instead, and quite rightly, we get a USB-C port. Now that means that Apple has had to invent this ridiculous dongle which connects to a cable which then goes into this and then you put the Apple Pencil into that dongle and that charges it. It's teeth itchingly annoying, frustrating, pointless, user hostile, I don't get it. The second issue with this is that the first generation Apple Pencil is garbage. And what really frustrates me about this is that there is no technical reason that Apple could not have put the same magnetic strip on here that they did on the iPad Air 5. This Apple Pencil should work with this 10th generation iPad. I should be able to put it on there and let it charge, and in fact it does, <laughs> it does attach. How weird. I don't know what Apple are playing at, I don't think it's fair for people that want to spend less and buy this 10th generation iPad, but that's just the way it is. So basically, the Magic Keyboard, the 10th generation iPad wins hands down. When it comes to the Apple Pencil, if that is important to you, there's no contest. The iPad Air 5 wins, well, not even hands down, it completely boots this out of the park. So, conclusion time. The fact that £170 is not an insignificant amount of money, but it's not a huge chunk of cash. If you can, just try and find that extra £170 and get yourself the iPad Air 5. The Apple Pencil 2 support, even if you don't want that accessory straight away, the fact that you know you can get it at some stage is quite nice. Then you've got the slightly better screen, which isn't a huge improvement, but you do get rid of that gap between the glass and the display technology. You've got P3 colour and all that sort of stuff. And for all my moaning about the M1 chip, who knows? Apple might do something next week, next month, early next year that makes use of it finally. So I think the iPad Air wins, personally. The problem that the 10th generation iPad has is that it isn't the entry-level iPad. That role is still served by the 9th generation that you can still buy on Apple's website. But if you are interested in it and you want to know more about the 10th generation iPad, I understand, keep watching for a link to my full review of this device.